Hello and welcome to this presentation, Determining a Futures Price. In this presentation we're going to look at a simple theoretical method for determining what the futures price is based upon known information in the market. And then we'll look at what happens if the actual futures price as observed in the market deviates significantly from the theoretical price. The argument is that uh, if there is a significant difference between the theoretical price and the actual price, then there's a possibility to make risk-free money, in other words, arbitrage. So, for example, let's suppose we wanted to work out the price of gold for one year time. How would we do that? Well, the formula, or the simple formula, for determining the price of an asset for a future day is as given here. Futures price, then, is said to be based upon the price of the asset in the market today, in other words, its spot price or cash price, plus cost of carry. Now, what do we mean by cost of carry? Well, cost of carry refers to the costs incurred if you own an asset for any length of time. For example, if it's a valuable asset such as gold, you'd need to store it, so you'd need to pay a warehouse manager. You may purchase the gold in one location and need to transport it or freight it to another venue in order to store it, so there are transportation costs. Because it's a valuable commodity, you need to insure it. And then there's the question of how do you raise the capital in the first place in order to purchase the underlying asset. You may already have money, for example, on deposit, earning interest. You take that money for deposit to buy the spot gold, or of course you might decide to borrow money in the first place to purchase the gold. So either way, there's a financing cost. Now with uh, simple types of commodities, the main consideration is the cost of carry. However, there are some assets, for example, like equities or government bonds or corporate bonds, where they are known to generate a return. For example, if you own shares, you generate dividends. If you own a bond, then you're entitled to coupon income. So those returns can, in fact, help reduce the cost of carrying the asset over time. But in our simple example for gold, we'll just ignore the concept of carry return. So let's suppose then that we know that the spot price is $1,000 and we've worked out the associated costs of carry for gold. That would then give us a futures price of $1,200. So the $1,200 is referred to as the theoretical futures price or the fair futures price. Let's suppose now that we observe in the actual futures market price and we see that the one-year futures price is actually trading at $1,290. In that case, is it possible for us to conceive of a way in which we could make a risk-free profit from this perceived anomaly? So we have the situation then where the actual futures price is at $1,290 and the theoretical futures price is at $1,200. And we know that the spot price is 1000 and we know associated costs are $200. What we could do is what's known as a simple cash and carry arbitrage. In this transaction, what we would do is purchase the underlying asset, which is the gold, for $1,000. And we know that if we carry this position to maturity, we're going to incur a cost of $200. So we know in advance that in one year time, we will be in possession of gold and the actual cost will be a total of $1,200 to us. But before we set off on this one year journey, what we can do is go into the futures market and sell futures for $1,290, thereby locking in on a forward basis the price of gold for $1290. This is known as a cash and carry arbitrage. So just to summarize then, today we purchase the gold, we carry the position over time, but simultaneously today we lock in a forward selling price at $1290 via the futures contract. So when we come to maturity, the payment for carrying the gold over time and the original spot price comes to a total of 1200 However, via the futures contract, of course, we'd locked in 
a forward selling price of 1290. So that's the receipt of 1290. It costs us 1200. So our net profit on the trade would be $90. And that's risk free because we simultaneously locked in the buying price for gold and we know our carry costs. And we also simultaneously today locked in a forward selling price. So therefore, we have risk free profit. Now we can observe the relationship between the price of the spot instrument and the futures contract over time. This graph shows us the price on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Now we know that in our example earlier, the spot price for gold was $1,000 and the fair or theoretical futures price was say $1,200. Now of course over time the spot price can rise and fall and we can observe that the difference between the spot price and the futures price over time, which is initially $200, this is in effect the theoretical cost of carry, the basis, we can observe that as the spot price moves over time, the futures price should aim to track this and eventually, on the last day in the life of the futures price, converge with the underlying asset. Of course, what causes the futures price to narrow to the spot price is the cost of carry effect. And of course, if the futures price deviates significantly from its theoretical level, then we know that arbitrages will move in. That is, they will sell expensive futures and buy the spot instrument. Thus, their action will cause the futures price to move back to theoretical level. So that at maturity day, the futures price and the spots price should come together largely due to the actions of potential arbitrages.